So driving through Rev and the Champagne region, we've been musing about how it's really interesting our connection between. Oh, it's really interesting. Driving through Rev and the Champagne region, it's really got me musing and pontificating and thinking of a paradox, uh, our infatuation, our link with, um, with alcohol, when we know alcohol is the most destructive drug on the planet, pretty much. Um, even as you can see on the internet, it's, um, um, and that of crime, uh, crime and uh, a negative effect on the economy, and all the big long list of things, uh, alcohol is statistically the worst drug for us and for society. Um, so to the health, effect the economy, etc. Et 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 and you have some infatuation with it and and I love a drink, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love a drink. But it's got me thinking, especially in Kreb, a place that's so sacred, it's had a religious epitaph, some prescription there for the best part of two thousand years. The kings of France used to get crowned there, twenty five the twenty five coronations, the twenty five coronations there. The kings of France used to get crowned there, there's twenty five there, there's 25 coronations there. So as sacred as that. It's also the birthplace of Champagne, which was, which has been accredited to a monk, Dom Perignon. So, on the one hand, devout religious um, pontiff. On the um, flip side, he invents another way of drinking booze <laughs> and a way of getting particularly drunk quite quickly. And that connection there, so it's, uh, that sacredness is just a paradox, really, because booze corrupts lives, and yeah, but yeah, we won't, you yeah, we've been drinking since year dot, we love drinking so, as a society, well, as, as, a, as, a, as a species, as a race. Um, you know, it's shown that other, other animals do too. As much as something like chimpanzees, they're drinking fermented liquid, fermented um, juice, and they're getting pissed on that. Minted juice of um, fruit. Uh, we're getting pissed on that. Um, really interesting. Escape from reality. Then, I think you're on that same vein. So, if alcohol's legalised, well, yeah, drop side. What about drugs? I've seen, I've seen so many. Um, I've seen. I've now seen so many interviews with parents of. Parents who have lost their children through drug abuse, overdose, etc., etc., and so many of them say the same thing: so legalize it, legalize it, get it above board, control it, tax it. Think about it. You know, so at the moment, alcohol ruins lives, but it's totally legal. Sugar. I mean, Jesus Christ! You see people, you see people queuing up outside the, um, the donut shop and the rock shops at the uh, British Seaside Resort. These people are huge. And yet they're still allowed to pour more sugar down their mouths. And what impacts that have? In, uh, obviously, has a massive impact on drains of the economy, ruins families again, uh, negative effect on child health uh, in terms of setting the wrong example for children. It's, it's a it's a it's a life wrecking um, condition. And yet it's fine. We're absolutely fine to tea, pump sugar out there. Although uh, the, I think the government has realised so to wake up and they start curbing it because. In an, aut in an automated life, you need less manual labour, and those people who do manual jobs are now just eating the same amount of calories, but they burn them off. And I think there are more calories out there as well. And that's just wrapped in plastic. So, big manufacturing companies like Unilever, it's fine for them to pump sugar, millions of tons of sugar, into children's bodies. It's fine for them to wrap it in serious plastics. But drugs? No, drugs are, drugs are banned. So if you get drugs above board, get them controlled, legalised, taxed, different cartels, Give them jobs, you know, give the factories, they have factories, they own the businesses, work with work Slate Clean, so they have big employers, so they've got all the things they want. They employ farmers, and so the farmers work as well, all above board and dispose of the waste ethically, so they're dumping all those hideous amounts of diesel and uh, drug refining and waste products into the environment. Or it's controlled, it'll bring prices right down, and it can be taxed as well. And then you can be done in a controlled environment, like a pub, you know, so like a coke house or a weed house, and police there watch it, they know all the issues is. Rather than what we've got at the moment, 
war on drugs is just simply not working. Well, it's been going on for 70, 80 years. Drug intake is increasing. Yeah, deaths as a result are increasing. Violent crimes increase. And what you've got now on our streets, you've got kids pretty much being stabbed every day, every day. So uh, I think there's a thousand, there were a thousand stabbings last year, so the last 12 months, you know, between 11 and 19 year olds. That's three kids a day getting stabbed, mostly stuff, you know, because not just drugs, it's culture, well, no, it's not, you just have a fight down the park, you get your knife out and stab people. But you know, a lot of it is drug related and gang related, so we can just cut all that out. Just surely it makes surely it makes sense. It makes sense to me. I hope that when my little girl's older, she can make the choice. She can do it in a legal way. Where's music just coming from? Driving through, crank.